Hi, good morning. Good morning and uh, welcome all participants to this um, series of the Asian Impact Webinar on promoting social bonds for impact investments in Asia. My name is um, Gosin Peng Sopon, the Financial Specialist um, at the Asian Development Bank. I'll be your host and your moderator for today. Um, today's event will be divided into two major sessions. Uh, we will first have a presentation um, on promoting social bonds for impact investment in Asia by uh, Mr. Jason Mortimer, Head of Sustainable Investments, Fixed Income and Senior Portfolio Manager of the Nomura Asset Management. After that, we will proceed with a very interesting panel discussion, which will be joined by two additional panelists. So I hope that all of you um, can stay with us until the end of the webinar today. And during the webinar, as you might have seen uh, from the video, so if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to type them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And you might also want to identify a speaker or a panelist that you would like to address your questions to, and we will try to address them accordingly. Um, as you may know, um, recently ADB published um, two papers. The first one was on the primer on social bonds and recent developments in Asia back in February this year. As, as well as a paper on promoting social bonds for impact investment in Asia only in May this year. Um, the first report was to provide a basic common understanding about social bonds and why it's important um, to developing Asia under the current uh, environment. The second report, which we will be discussed um, today, will provide a potential sectors or areas that social bonds can create more significant impact for, for all of us in, um, in Asia and the Pacific. So without further ado, um, let me invite um, Jason for his presentation. Um, Jason, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Bok. I really appreciate your introduction. And uh, so if we could switch over to the, uh, to the presentation. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, so my name is Jason Mortimer. I work at Nomura Asset Management as the head of sustainable investment for fixed income. Um, and uh, I was one of the co-authors of, uh, of this paper, uh, which was sponsored by the ADB, uh, about promoting social bonds for impact investments in Asia. Uh, this is the second paper that we did. Um, it was published uh, recently. And if we could go to the next slide, uh, we can see the two papers there. Um, uh, the most recent paper was published in, in May 2021, um, looking at, uh, at the social impacts uh, of, of, of the social bond market. Uh, basically, you know, we, we used a very... Um, uh, extensive, uh, we created a database of, of basically every single social bond that's ever been issued uh, in the world, uh, analyzed that uh, in various ways. And this presentation will go through some of the, the most salient uh, findings, I think, uh, for, for market participants uh, that we find interesting going forward. So next slide, if you please. So the, uh, this, uh, this, this introduction is, is broken into four pieces. Uh, basically, I'm gonna go through the range of social impacts addressed by social bonds that we found. Uh, and analyze. Two, the social impacts that are re most relevant to Asia. Uh, three, the social impact measurement, uh, uh, you know, new findings, uh, new, new, new ideas and concepts and, and best practices there. And four, finally, optimizing impact in the COVID-19 era and beyond. And just as a quick, you know, uh, reminder, I mean, the social bonds, um, which are, uh, you know, like green bonds, uh, they, they actually, um, you know, have the same, uh, they're, they're aligned to the same, uh, you know, ICMA, um, uh, principles, uh, but instead of, of kind of environmental and climate change focused uh, projects, assets, um, uh, and the like, it's focused on on social uh, projects and assets. And of course, uh, in 2020, we saw uh, quite a quite a large increase, in about about eight times increase uh, in annual issuance in social bonds, um, as they this this format seemed to be very well suited um, to the socioeconomic crisis that we've that we've faced. Uh, since since the dawn of COVID, um, and what's interesting, I think, is that not only was that very large increase in growth, um, uh, you know, not only we saw that we saw in 2020 uh, to now about 149 billion US dollars worth of, of social bonds issued globally uh, that are compliant with with ICMA uh, uh, guidelines, um, but that actually growth seems to be continuing very strongly, if not accelerating. Um, in in the first half of this year, we compiled an additional data. Uh, on uh, the issuance trends up until the end of June of this year. 
And we find that already 122 billion uh, US dollars worth of social bonds have been issued um, around the world, uh, that is. Um, so it seems to be, we definitely seem to be on track for, uh, for eclipsing last year's uh, social bond uh, issuance. And it does, I think, seem, it does indicate to us that the social bonds will, will be um, not a flash in the pan, but something that will be going forward. It really does seem to add a lot, I think, uh, in terms of diversification of the types of projects and assets that, uh, that not only the issuers and the types of issuers they can issue against, but also for investors uh, looking to diversify uh, their, uh, their, their impact investments on the fixed income side. So if we could go to the next slide, please. So first I wanna talk about the, the range of social impacts addressed by these social bonds. Uh, and the, the, the main findings are thus, you know, from 2017 to 2020, which is basically, uh, you know, the, the bulk of, of the social bonds have been issued um, after the, the ICMA uh, issued the guidelines uh, for social bonds in 2017, more than 190 billion uh, equivalent of publicly listed and ICMA social bond compliant social bonds have been issued. And in our report, we calculated the estimated dollar projected funding allocations uh, to each bond based on ICMA's non-exclusive list of social bond project categories. Uh, a few of those categories you can see on the, uh, on the pie chart there on the right, including uh, what we calculated to be the dollar um, equivalent allocated amounts uh, to each of the various project categories. Uh, again, this is against every social bond that's ever been issued in the world. Um, so we found that globally the top funding projects during this period were crisis unemployment alleviation, with 50, uh, sorry, 65.6 US dollars a billion, uh, education and training, 31 uh, billion, and affordable housing, 29.8 billion. And so these are the main, these are the main areas. Uh, although health, of course, we have seen a, a rising share, especially after COVID, uh, but still uh, relatively small at 10%. Um, SME finance, which we'll touch on later, seems to be a very well-suited uh, project area for, for, for emerging a Asia and Asia in general. Um, so that's also one to look on. Uh, can we please uh, go to the next slide? So here I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into uh, into some of these uh, impact areas uh, based on the social uh, bond principles uh, by ICMA. So we look again. We looked um, uh, in order to imp uh, to, to analyze uh, the social impacts of the social bond market itself globally. We classified and quantitatively analyzed the entire market to identify project allocation trends. Uh, here, these are some uh, findings from, from the paper, uh, which, I've, which I've taken, uh, which is freely available on the ADB website. Um, in table one, we can see classification of the uh, International Capital Market Association, ICMA, social bond uh, uh, use of proceeds by project category and project type. Uh, so we basically broke out uh, the various project categories aligned with the ICMA principles, uh, the various types of underlying project types. So for example, for affordable basic infrastructure, that includes both water and sanitation and transport infrastructure. Uh, the most targeted, most commonly targeted populations uh, for these types of bonds. Again, this is important uh, in the, the concept of social bonds that, that we also are targeting in general, um, kind of uh, you know, underserved or low income types of, uh, types of populations uh, to make sure that the, uh, that the impacts are being targeted to those most in need, um, and also the most commonly referenced SDGs um, uh, for each of those projects. Again, this is allocated up um, a, bo a bottoms up analysis, uh, quantitative analysis that we did, um, uh, you know, looking at every single bond uh, and based on the, the frameworks that were issued against those bonds, social bond frameworks. So this is, is I think, a quite an interesting look at uh, a snapshot of, of the, real, uh, the real market as it is, um, and the various types of projects populations and SDGs that are most uh, most commonly referenced. So again, breaking that down by the numbers, we can see that uh, crisis unemployment alleviation, uh, a kind of a new category that was created in 2020 um, for COVID basically, uh, about 65.6 .6 billion US dollars, SME finance 24, education and training 31, and affordable housing 29.9. And this unemployment, uh, crisis unemployment alleviation um, you know, this, this is a category that basically uh, saw a lot of issuance last year, um, uh, somewhat of a one-off uh, from these uh, European Union sure bonds, which were basically issued uh, by the European Union um, in order to, uh, to provide uh, unemployment insurance and other kinds of uh, rapid response kind of uh, funding for the social economic crisis that was faced uh, starting from last year. So it seems like a bit of a one-off, probably won't be continuing in, in such size, uh, but it did really kind of um, uh, add quite a lot of social bonds into the marketplace. Next slide, please. 
Now, this is uh, another way of looking at the, the range of social impacts addressed by these social bonds. We found really, you know, as I, as I mentioned, a big shift occurred in 2020, not only in the quantum of bonds that are being issued into the market, which, which rose about uh, seven, by magnitude of about seven times, but also uh, we found that the project category allocations really decisively shifted from a focus on basic services to much more crisis response related projects in 2020 and going forward. And we also looked at the regional differences that were uh, apparent in the various social bonds, um, especially in, in, in Europe, which tends to be the largest uh, issuer, but also Asia, which is, which is basically the second largest uh, um, by, uh, by, by, by region, uh, followed by the uh, North America and uh, South America and, and, and Africa, et cetera. Um, so what we found in Asia was that the Asian social bonds tend to be relatively more focused on, on sort of economic issues. Uh, as part of that socioeconomic uh, project category uh, book. Um, SME finance is about 37% and transport infrastructure was about 21%. Um, and uh, so you can see there the breakdown uh, in, in Asia versus non-Asia on the chart on the right, um, uh, especially that SME finance tends to be really a large part of the, of the Asian uh, issuance of, of social bonds. And I must say that uh, you know, for our data set that we looked at, Asia, in general means uh, Korea, Japan, um, uh, and, and uh, those, those, are, those are sort of the, the main issuers uh, so far. Uh, the number of, of uh, kind of what we would say maybe not ex, ex high income region uh, Asia uh, social bonds are still relatively uh, few in number. Um, in fact, most of the, most of the Chinese uh, social bonds are in fact not ICMA compliant, so that we did not include them in our, in our database. Uh, but we do see that there is more issuance coming out of, the, of that region and, and also, you know, in the Philippines and other kinds of places, um, uh, mainly, mainly uh, aligned to sort of uh, SME finance type of projects. Uh, so it does seem to be a, um, a, a category uh, project that project category that, that works for this region. If we go to the next slide, please. Now, this is the second part of, of, of the presentation, looking really at the social impacts that are relevant to Asia. Uh, we looked at case studies of Asian uh, of social bonds issued by Asian issuers, and uh, and, and put these together um, uh, in order to show you know, basically uh, in 10, 10 case studies um, the most most kind of we thought quite interesting case studies that were that were Asia relevant um, and quite innovative uh, recent issues uh, on, on the social bond side, and we created a reference book uh, you know highlighting these case studies to discuss each bond's uh, target areas, populations, target populations, the SDG linkages, the reporting framework. What you know, basically, what what the issuer was trying to do. The idea here is that uh, you know issuers uh, in Asia can hopefully you know, you know look at these at these uh, you know this very Asia specific um, uh, you know uh, case studies, get an idea for what works, what's innovative, um, you know you know see see maybe uh, get get an inspiration for for issuing their own uh, social bonds. Um, we think that really this this the social bond uh, uh, market uh, you know is is one that, that could really seems to work uh, for Asia. Uh, so you know on table two we've looked at the possible impact areas to be addressed by social bonds: uh, crisis alleviation, health, water and sanitation, food security, SME finance, resilience, education and training, girls' education, gender equity, digital inclusion, poverty and and inequality, and the various uh, issuers uh, and, and SDGs that were associated with that. So that's all written up in, in the um, uh, in the report. If you'd like to have a look, and uh, again, you know, looking also uh, kind of breaking down the, by the numbers in Asia over years, um, you know, where where is the issuance going in terms of dollars? Again, you can see that big jump um, in 2020, and how that's uh, largely going into SME finance uh, for the SME, for the Asian issuers, uh, as well as um, you know transport and affordable housing as well. Uh, next slide, please. Now here are a few of the, uh, I think what were quite a, some of the interesting case studies that we looked at that may be interesting for, 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 Asia, for Asian issuers of, of social bonds. Uh, the first was this uh, Nipro Corporation, social bonds for securing medical supply chains. This is a Japanese corporation, a medical equipment and healthcare supply manufacturing company. They issued about uh, approximately 473 million US dollars worth uh, in a yen bond, um, uh, pretty long dated. Uh, the use of proceeds for this social bond was capital investment to secure medical supply chains, including vaccines and dialysis treatment. Uh, the target population was the general population, 
uh, with a particular focus on aging populations and patients in underserved rural areas. And the SDG link is so, you know, very, very relevant to the, to the Japanese uh, uh, national circumstances. Uh, SDG linkage was mainly for SDG3, for good health and well-being, so a very clear uh, linkage there. And the impact reporting is going to be that NIPRO will continuously disclose domestic drug and medical device manufacturing capacity, patient capacity, and the number of centers, i.e. the outputs, and number of drugs and devices sold, and the number of patients served, i.e. the outcomes. So a very nice uh, broad look at, uh, at, uh, at the real impacts uh, that will come uh, out, of, out, of, out of this investment. And the second case study, we looked at uh, Chugoku Bank. It's a regional bank um, uh, in, the, in the Chugoku region uh, of, of, of Japan, which is kind of uh, Okoyama, sort of uh, close to Osaka, if you're familiar with that. Um, uh, they issued a social bond for SME lending and COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, crisis alleviation. So this is a, a regional bank, as I mentioned, uh, based in Okayama Prefecture. Uh, they issued uh, about 95 million US dollar worth uh, equivalent, uh, and again, it is a yen bond. The use of proceeds were funding for emergency loans to individuals and regional SMEs temporarily struggling due to the pandemic. The population, target population is socioeconomic crisis affected individuals and SMEs in the regional areas. Uh, the SDG linkages that they targeted were mainly SDG eight, so decent work and economic growth. And the impact reporting is that uh, the bank will disclose the fund allocation status and any changes on its public website and provide impact reporting on the amount and number of loans dispersed by category of eligibility criteria. So again, you can see that um, you know, there, even though there's not yet uh, you know, a, a kind of hard and fast um, uh, kind of market standard for reporting on, on these various uh, social impacts, you know, these are some of the, you know, we, we, I think we were able to highlight through these um, uh, case studies in the report, uh, some of some of the best practices uh, for the various types of issuers. So please, you know, use as a reference uh, if you're thinking of, of issuing a, a social bond. Uh, next slide, please. So this is uh, this part we get into the social impact measurement. Um, you know, again, it's uh, it's definitely uh, very important that we that we look um, uh, and and be and be very. Uh, uh, specific and exact uh, as we can with a high quality of data uh, and reporting uh, and follow up by the investors as well, because as we've seen in the green uh, finance um, and now now increasingly in social, you know the rapid increase of this market uh, really necessitates a rigorous yet practical impact assessment approach uh, in order to avoid green or social washing, which I think is increasingly on the minds of uh, of, of investors and the media is beginning to cover this as well. So we really need to do our homework and make sure that the data is, is, uh, is accurate, uh, meaningful, and that the investors are, are, are using that properly. So you know, one of the extra challenges though on, on the social bond side is that you know, what we found was that while environmental impact is generally standardized and physically measurable in term, tens of CO2 or um, you know, uh, kind of uh, tons of pollution or, uh, or tons of water used or something like that, you know, social impact is very diverse and it's also tends to be harder to quantify. Um, and basically we're talking about the range of, of human activity, uh, essentially that these social bonds are potentially funding. Uh, so it's very difficult, uh, much more difficult compared to green bonds to come to one kind of uh, you know, uh, comparable standard. So, but what we did do was we did look at some of the various uh, you know, impact measurement standards and practices that are out there in the market today. Of course, ICMA uh, provides um, uh, some guidance uh, and they've uh, through through their guidelines as well as a, a recently uh, you know updated handbook on uh, on, on impact reporting, uh, not yet a standard, but uh, but a good idea and good best practices that are being developed uh, on the social bond side for how and what to report on. Um, mapping to SDGs, of course, uh, you know a lot of investors are using SDGs sort of as a touch point as a common language uh, for talking about um, what types of, issue, of of impacts, what types of projects they're 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 investing in. Uh, you know, it's not perfect uh, for for uh, for market investors. Uh, it doesn't capture all the complexities, but it does give us kind of a, a common a common language to talk in. And I think investors uh, are, are especially in Japan and certainly around the world. I think are really um, you know uh, looking to SDGs uh, as one of the first touch points for understanding just what these impact investments are doing. And also, we talked about uh, the GIIN Iris Plus. Um, this is kind of a catalog of metrics and standards, uh, both for social and environmental uh, performance metrics, 
uh, for impact investors, it does tend to be more focused on small, smaller scale uh, equity uh, type of startup um, scales. So somewhat less uh, relevant for the for the fixed income uh, markets. But uh, we thought we thought it was worth mentioning. And uh, again, this on Figure Seven, I just show how we've broken down the percentage share of global ICMA compliant social bonds uh, by by SDGs. Um, so uh, in this case, we 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 use the same database. Um, and, uh, uh, and and broke it down to see what were the most commonly targeted SDGs uh, by by dollar amount. Next slide, please. So again, this is a uh, you know looking very quickly at the social bond impact measurement, the findings that we had and that we pre pre present in the paper for, for reference. Um, uh, you know, as of 2020, as I said, there's really not a, a standard that exists yet. Um, uh, it's less developed than on the green bond that side. That is true. But there is, um, you know, the beta is under, undergoing, and certainly best practices are being identified and fleshed out. So we did, we went over some best practices that we found, you know, the concept of additionality, being sure that, uh, that these that these projects that are funded, you know, they do provide the benefits to the target population that would not have accrued in the absence of the project. Uh, they are consistent, verifiable measurements, aim for comparability where, where, where possible. You know, so do try to keep keep in mind. What are the other issues? Um, uh, what what types of metrics are they using? Maybe you know look to that as sort of an emerging standard, and focus on real impact, um, reporting on outcomes and impacts, especially uh, to identify and track the impacts over time. Should be given priority to uh, to outputs, you know, sort of counting heads uh, or data for for data for the sake of data, which I think is is something of an issue in in the social bond market. Um, and again, you know, there are some, some, this ICMA has put out a social bond impact working group. Uh, they've got guidelines for impact measurement. It's a very good document that you can check um, uh, for, you know, formal, you know, what kinds of formal uh, internal processes you can use, uh, you know, recommendations to report annually, uh, the types of social bond categories to use, target populations, what they are, the outcomes, uh, outputs, and impacts and expected social impacts made possible, and how, how, how to illustrate those. So please use that as a reference and the link is down there at the bottom of the slide. And if you could go to the next slide, please. So this is my final slide, just an idea of what can we do really, uh, how can we put this all together to optimize the impact uh, for, for the COVID-19 era and beyond, especially for Asian issuers. So as we found in 2020, social bond issuance, uh, you know, really experienced a very strong global growth driven by crisis related sectors, uh, like education and job retraining, SME finance and unemployment alleviation. So we think that this shows that the social bonds are very well suited to raising funds for socioeconomic crisis responses. And we, we recommend, I think it's, it's, uh, it's we, can, we can recommend that uh, government and official sector issuers especially can consider developing their own social bond frameworks and issuance pipelines now to respond quickly to crisis in the future. I mean, one of the clear patterns that emerged from the data was that uh, we see a lot you know, where, where where issuance of social bonds is really growing the most strongly is um, uh, on the kind of a, you know, uh, agency and government affiliated uh, type of um, a type of issuers so quasi government government agencies um, where they have sort of a very strong and, and focused social mandate for example on affordable housing or, or uh, kind of uh, education um, these are ones that uh, that seem to be very well suited to to issuing a lot of social bonds, as it's very well aligned to their uh, to their mandates. And so we, we think it's a good idea that uh, that these types of issuers, you know, get ready uh, now, start issuing, uh, start uh, start putting together a framework. It does take some time to get that pipeline started, so that um, uh, when when you need it, uh, it, it is ready. And uh, secondly, you know, by region, we found that SME finance was the dominant category for Asian social bond issuance overall. Um, you know, 9.4 billion in allocations versus only 5.0 billion uh, for the rest of the world. So really, um, uh, really over, over, over outperformance uh, from, from the Asian SME side. Um, and then in X high income Asian markets, social bond issuance is almost entirely for SME finance. But uh, outside of Asia, uh, the X high income issuance is focused more on basic needs like housing, health and education, which we see somewhat less of in, in Asia. So the, the takeaway here is that uh, you know, to, for the, the social bond principles, SME lending and financial service access impact haters, we find are very well aligned to the real needs of developing Asian economies. So Asian uh, issuers, I think, are, are would be well suited to focusing on those areas, especially banks. Um, you know, banks and financial firms, uh, we think, can really uh, issue social bonds to fund impact through uh, micro, small, and medium uh, enterprise lending and unjustified finance. And 
We also think that further social bond market growth may be enabled by impact diversification from private sector healthcare and public sector affordable housing and education. And so th those are our main takeaways and recommendations from the paper. Thank you very much. Jason, thank you very much. Um, I think from, from your presentation, um, it is quite clear that you know, social bonds have actually attracted lots of attention you know, from both um, Asia and also around the world. But you know, the key issue is how to measure the impact, right? Because it's quite different from, from green bonds because you know, for, show, for social bonds, there is no scientific way of measuring the social impact. But um, I think one thing that we must ensure is that, you know, if Asia and the Pacific are to recover from this pandemic, we must make sure that we are directing our, you know, public and private funds to the right issues, to the right projects in the right way, right? So I think that, that, that's a key message um, uh, from, from the presentation. And there's also questions about, you know, where to find those reports. Um, those reports are available um, on ADB's website. You can Google using the, the um, the, the name of the report, and you can also find a case study um, that Jason just presented in, the, in those reports as well. So um, let, let me now proceed to the um, panel discussions. You know, climate change, as we all know, um, poses a risk to the financial sector, but you know, these risks are often you know, difficult to assess because you know, especially in emerging markets where data is not available or very limited. And as Jason mentioned, um, you know, we, all of us, we do need data in order to accurately um, measure the social impact, right? And also, you know, from the perspective of the regulators, um, you know, data is very important so that they can maintain the financial market stability. And also at the same time, you know, from the institutional investors point of view, you know, they also need the data um, to make sure that they can make informed investment decisions. But at the same time, we also need to remember that as an institutional um, investors, they can also play a key role in helping listed companies or borrowers or securities issuers to improve their own corporate governance practices and how to include ESG as part of their business operations. So in this session, we will discuss you know, how financial markets, uh, regulators, as well as the other relevant um, stakeholders can support a better alignment of impact reporting framework, as well as the roles of institutional investors in promoting ESG practices of listed companies, and also how ADB can, can be part of that, how ADB can support the issuers to um, you know, transition their operations to a net zero carbon emission. The, the, I think the, the key issue that we need to understand is that um, although we focus a lot about the size of the social bond market, this is not the, 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 the main problem. Um, and then what's even more important is, you know, how financial institutions or corporates or borrowers actually integrate this environmental, social governance as part of their operation. They don't need to issue a social bond or a green bond, but as long as they integrate this as part of their main operations, I think this is what we need. So first, um, let, let me introduce um, the two additional panelists who will be um, joining me and Jason in this discussion. First is uh, Ms. Chu Tian. Um, she's the economist um, of Economic Research and Regional Cooperation Department of the ADB, as well as uh, Mr. Rico Zhang. He's a senior director, Asia Pacific of the International Capital Market Association. And um, just a reminder to, to the participants that um, if you want to raise any questions, feel free to, to type your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And we will try to address um, most, if not all of them uh, within this panel discussion today. So um, perhaps I can start with um, Rico, because you know, as Rico knows, um, you know, everyone knows you know, money is one of the most important issues, right? And a lot of money is needed if we are to promote inclusive and sustainable recovery. So um, both the public and the private capital participation is required. Clearly, you know, from the ICMS point of view, capital market can you know, play a key role to mobilize private capital to finance a much needed climate resilient um, infrastructure and social projects. And I believe that um, you know, ICMA has recently um, revised um, the green bond principles as well as the social bond principles only in, um, you know, in June this year. And these principles, as all of us know, has been referenced uh, by the majority of sustainable bond issuers. 
So perhaps we can start with um, you know, inviting Rico to give us um, a few ideas about these principles and what are the key items that were recently updated. Um, Rico, over to you. Thank you very much, Park, and uh, it's an honor to be here. And also thank you, ADB, for such a lovely invitation uh, to be part of the discussion. I feel like uh, I should be part of the uh, presentation by Jason because uh, he uh, mentioned a lot about ICMA and our social bond principles. I think uh, uh, he has uh, touched upon uh, excellent points on, um, you know, um, a lot of things, including the summary of the uh, uh, social bond principles, uh, how we map our principles to the SDG, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, maybe I uh, give some update on uh, three aspects. First is uh, just a, a general market color, uh, just to supplement what uh, Jason has mentioned. Um, so uh, first, uh, the social bond uh, market actually uh, increased substantially um, mainly thanks to um, uh, the COVID-19 uh, last year, ironically, um, because the crisis, I think a lot of economies want to respond to such crisis. And uh, uh, particularly in Asia, I totally agree that um, the focus uh, uh, is um, the SME financing. And also, as you know, in Asia, uh, the biggest portion of the issuers actually are banks. Uh, so they want to su support such financing and uh, respond to such uh, demand by SMEs. So the issues issued a lot of social bonds and globally also it increased like eight, nine times. Um, that's uh, first thing. Second is um, also, uh, as you know, the whole sustainable finance market actually still uh, increased uh, um, step by step. And also um, social bond is a very in uh, important component to the whole sustainable finance because after all COVID-19 is not just a social issue it's an environmental issue as well uh, so in the picture of uh, uh, net zero and uh, and uh, 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 whole sustainable finance uh, uh, global picture social actually is very important to help uh, those uh, economies and also corporates to to do the transition, because when they do um, more environmental friendly economies um, activities, social actually is a very important aspect to uh, make them to achieve that. Uh, so uh, globally, uh, we are very happy to see 97% um, of the bonds, uh, including all the uh, sustainable uh, bonds, including uh, green bonds, social bonds, sustainability bonds, and our new created sustainability link bond. Uh, actually, um, uh, they are all aligned with uh, with ICMA's uh, principles. So that's very uh, uh, good news. Then I take you back a little bit to the history because social bond actually is um, um, uh, developed for a few years already. Um, even before the first version of social bond principles, which is a, uh, was in uh, 2017, um, there are social bonds issued in the market already. At that time, uh, they simply just reference to the principles of uh, green bond principles uh, because there are no reference to, to, to issue such bonds. Uh, then uh, in uh, 2017, uh, I think the um, uh, mandate from the market is quite strong uh, to uh, basically to release a uh, more social bond focused guidelines. So at ICMA, we uh, released such a social bond principles at, uh, for the very first time uh, in uh, 2017. Then since, uh, since then, the social bond, uh, uh, I wouldn't say uh, developed rapidly, but uh, it's still steadily uh, just, uh, you know, um, increased uh, uh, more and more. And uh, again, uh, back to 2020, uh, 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 because the uh, crisis, the social bond increased just, uh, you know, um, substantially. And the market focus now moved to social bond more. Although, you know, green bond, that's again, uh, within the uh, sustain sustainable uh, finance family, is green bond is still the mainstream. Uh, so don't get me wrong. Um, second, as I mentioned, for the whole uh, transition carbon neutral and also net zero uh, contest, a uh, social aspect actually is very important. So it is included into the um, company's strategy to develop their transition strategy, uh, strategy and also how to uh, transition their business uh, to more 
uh, climate friendly uh, business. So um, when you transition, particularly the um, you know uh, the, the the hard to abate sectors, particularly like coal uh, energy companies, um, how to move their employees uh, to the new uh, energy and how to uh, help. Uh, them to 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 basically uh, to transition. Um, this is the important uh, important issue, right? So the social obviously is very very important, and how to calculate the social impact out of that also is another important issue. So in the context of the, the whole sustainable finance, uh, the social actually is very important. As I mentioned uh, in uh, last year, twenty twenty, we create a new asset class, which is a sustainable sustainability link bonds. This at not necessarily just always reference to the target for environmental uh, objectives. It also can include social as well. So uh, social aspect actually will be uh, a, 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 um, a very important component to such sustainability link the targets, uh, like uh, how you um, uh, set the uh, KPI uh, and the sustain, uh, sustainable performance targets. Um, this will uh, apply social uh, um, uh, uh, as well. Uh, so when issues uh, consider the capital market um, and also consider how to uh, uh, target their social objective, um, I think that this is also very important. So people should focus not only on the social bond, which is the use of proceed bonds, but also sustainability link bonds. A uh, third, just uh, very quickly on the update of the principles, we at this year released the three updated principles, which are green bond principles, social bond principle, and the sustainability bonds guidelines. They are all useful of proceeds bonds. Um, a few uh, important updates. First is uh, to respond to the uh, market to ask uh, further commitment by the issuers. Because as you know, the buy side always have a high expectation for the issues to commit to the climate change and social sustainability. So previously use of proceed, uh, issues only required to use all the proceeds uh, to those projects. That's, uh, that's already uh, good enough. But imagine in a scenario that issues only allocate like um, less than 10% of their uh, uh, um, you know, portfolio or, you know, capital uh, to uh, respond to such, such uh, sustainability climate change, while 90% of their business are still very, you know, high emission sectors, uh, that's not good enough. So to respond to that, um, basically, um, there's a um, uh, strong voice for the issue to make such commitment. So first is that they need to create a bond framework uh, basically to really be transparent about their strategy. At the issue level, they should commit to such, such sustainability and uh, to um, uh, basically to set very clear what's their strategy and, uh, and their commitments. Second is, as, as you know, the external reviews is, is always very important uh, uh, to, for such bond issued to uh, increase the credibility. Now, uh, we basically add two key recommendations. Uh, first is the bond framework. Second is external reviews. Uh, obviously, why we cannot um, say, you know, uh, push that into one more principles because previously, uh, uh, not, not previously, there currently is still four pre uh, pillars of the principles. But why we um, uh, uh, didn't, um, basically to, to add such external reviews to, to one more pillars, simply because uh, first is a, in certain jurisdiction that will create a legal liability and people's concerned about that uh, uh, potential consequence and, and, and their um, you know, uh, legal issues. Second is um, many uh, NDBs actually are very um, uh, sophisticated already and they have a very good internal framework. They don't need uh, uh, such external reviews to endorse their bonds when they issue and tap the capital market. So currently we put, uh, the wording is key recommendation, but as you, as you can tell, they are very important and I can say sometimes equally uh, important to the four uh, principles. 
Uh, second, as we, we still emphasize and, and, and encourage uh, transparency and information, and particularly such alignment, particularly with the existing taxonomies, either in the private sector, in the market, or in the official sector, say, like a few, uh, like an EU taxonomy as a benchmark. Uh, so when you do such uh, uh, bonds, you should align with uh, the um, existing uh, uh, taxonomies to help the market and particularly the buy side to understand better about uh, your projects and the, the degree of the, such alignment. As you know, as you know, EU already released the draft on social taxonomy. That's very encouraging as well. I, I think uh, in the jurisdictions uh, within Asia, a lot of um, economists also want to respond to that and create their own taxonomy. Then the problem obviously is to provide such common ground for the issues, not to just uh, duplicate their work and basically have a more harmonized framework for the issuers to reference to. Then third, we also give a lot of um, um, uh, guidance and extra sort of like um, uh, uh, papers uh, uh, which, which we, we want, to, uh, we want uh, uh, to be helpful to the issues when they tap the debt capital market, say um, the uh, social impact reporting, and particularly this year, um, uh, we actually uh, also provide a, a pre-issuance checklist for social bonds and social bond program. Uh, when you uh, do such things, you can you you can have such checklist and and basically a reference to that. And also, uh, we now have a lot of social bonds, sustainability bonds, and also uh, sustainability link bonds. Then a lot of data. Then the buy side is always uh, complains that um, you know. They, 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 they. It, it's not uh, harmonized enough that they always confused and when they cannot access uh, such data efficiently, how they evaluate and also the social impact, etc. So we basically uh, provide uh, guidelines for such uh, uh, data providers, particularly uh, how they, 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 they uh, you know, give some recommendation uh, what they're supposed to uh, uh, disclose at least a minimum requirement for such disclosure and, and, and the information, and uh, usually uh, how they uh, make such data uh, uh, more accessible for the market to 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 look at. So uh, these are the just you know very high level updates out of the uh, uh, GBP updates and and uh, our uh, annual conference. And I'm happy to um, discuss further. Thank you. I stop here. Thank, thank you very much, um, Rico. That, that, that is very comprehensive, and I think covered all the key elements of the um, all the um, you know, relevant um, principles and standards that I see MBA has um, introduced. So um, maybe we talk about um, you know unlocking the private capital. There's also a question about um, you know how how emerging countries that are actually relying on you know, heavily on the banking system for funding. How, how, how should these um, you know, countries, what do they need to do in order to, to unlock the, the private capital? And um, why is there, is there any evidence that you know, sustainability risk actually increase the firm's um, financing costs? Um, Grace, can, can, can I invite you to, to address these questions, please? Uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, regarding the, uh, the, the banking uh, dominated financial system in uh, many emerging markets, actually, that's true. Even, even nowadays in Asia, I think we still see that the banking uh, sector is still dominating as a, a primary lender to the private sector. I think um, that this uh, this actually offers some additional opportunities. So basically, the, as banks, I think as in Jason's presentation and uh, uh, Rico's uh, uh, talk just now, I think uh, banks can be uh, one of the players in the market, and then they are. So I think they are able to attract, they are able to tap the uh, capital market to attract interested uh, funding, and then and then they can uh, actually convert it, uh, capital, extend it them to the needed sectors, um, and then generate some environmental and social impacts. I think that's where the capital market can play an active role to, to channel the fundings to impacts. Um, and then uh, that's also where ADB is helping member countries uh, to develop their uh, capital market, in particular the bond market. Uh, in terms of the um, uh, related uh, um, uh, sustainability risks, um, in this year's uh, Asian Development Outlook, actually we conducted uh, some 
uh, thematic study uh, study on the sustainable finance. So what we do be, we do see a trend that uh, sustainable finance, the development itself can be sustainable. This is because we see a trend that uh, there is a lot of uh, financial motives underlying this drive. So in particular, we see there is an increasing uh, demand from the stakeholders to see that uh, their funding to be more uh, ESG related to be SDG linked. And then also we noticed that during the pandemic in particular, um, this ESG aligned assets are demonstrating uh, greater resilience compared to the benchmarks, similar mm. assets types. And then also, um, Given this uh, uh, overall change in the uh, stakeholders' preference and then the regulators' awareness of SDG uh, alignment, actually the um, environment of uh, um, corporations and then also investors are facing a more SDG-linked uh, environment, uh, investment environment. This translates to greater sustainability risks. Um, to the companies. So uh, we believe that uh, this sector will be further developed. So there is more financial motives for them to issue um, SDG related uh, bonds so that uh, uh, they can they can mitigate their sustainability risks and then also cater the demand for the uh, investors. And then we do find some evidence to show that the increased uh, sustainability risk and then also the shift in the preference of investors actually uh, can increase the um, corporation's uh, uh, financing cost during a transition in the regulations. So I think um, this all points to one fact that we do see this uh, sector can be developed in, um, in a sustainable way, given the uh, economic motives. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Kirst. Um, Jason, um, you know, based on your study, of course, uh, we, we, we know that, um, you know, issuing any kind of thematic bonds, not just social bonds, would, of course, you know, incur additional costs to the issuers, right? Because they need to engage the external review, they need to, um, you know, make continuous reporting and monitoring on the use of proceeds, and as well as the impact uh, reporting. So what, what would be the recommendation, you know, to, to the, um, you know, securities issuers, uh, why they should consider issuing a thematic bond, and you know why? Why? Why would this you know good for their business? It's a great question. Um, you know, we are aware as investors that uh, you know the issuance of, of green social uh, sustainability linked bonds, etc. I mean, it does incur a cost. It does. It is you know a difficult process to get all the all the different uh, uh, you know groups on board. Sometimes, uh, and we see. Um, you know the, the different uh, different sectors within the same organization that have never worked before. They have to collaborate. They have to get the data. They have to you know work together for for several years over the life of the bond. And you really have to get buy in from the top management um, uh, in order to, to issue that and make that commitment. You know there is a cost uh, in some cases in, in some markets. You do have some uh, some subsidies available. This is true in Japan. But you know really as investors we see that as a real sign uh, that that issuer is taking sustainability very seriously. And that actually can be, uh, you know, at this point, I think, can clearly be taken as uh, sort of a, a qualitative marker of better governance quality um, uh, for that for that issue that they're taking that step and they're they're making that commitment. And certainly, to the degree that the uh, the green or the social bond project that's being funded uh, or the, the assets there are really aligned to the underlying uh, business model of the issuer. Um, you know, you can actually make the case that that's actually uh, that, that that leads, I think, to financial. Uh, and, and credit enhancement as well, uh, if they seem to be um, uh, really investing in the future and investing uh, in sustainability, we think that that's actually something that can be that can be uh, monetized uh, to investors uh, in the form of uh, a better credit quality and overall uh, you know tighter credit spreads over time. We've actually done some studies and have printed uh, through the ADB, uh, for example, the way that uh, looking at the the quantitative outperformance of green bonds during times of market stress. Um, so it's still kind of a question as to exactly why that happens, but we did find a very strong uh, relationship in both the euro and dollar markets for green bonds to outperform even on the same issuer curve, um, you know, holding all, all other uh, variables equal uh, during, during times of, of, of market weakness. So it does seem to be something that, uh, that, that the market rewards for. And, uh, you know, I can't really say, uh, you know, whether or not, uh, you know, greenium or social premium is, is you know, what, what's right or what's the right level, mm. but it does seem to make sense. Uh, and that, that, that the market should reward that, that type of issuance. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Jason. And um, if I can come back to, to Rico, um, you know, Jason mentioned a bit about the social washing, right? We, we also heard a lot about green washing, but you know, when it, when it comes to social bonds, um, the new term of so-called social washing has also arise. So what, what is ICMA's you know, view on this and how, 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 how this can be avoided? Rico, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Again, uh, because the COVID-19 pandemic uh, last year, we note that actually a lot of uh, coronavirus uh, related uh, insurance, the so-called social bonds. And uh, previously in Jason's presentation, they excluding uh, China out of the picture. Uh, actually, um, as I just mentioned, 90% aligned uh, globally uh, with our principles, that's excluding China as well. So the big issue is, um, uh, uh, for those bonds, uh, a lot of them actually are not required to um, allocate 100% of their proceeds into those projects. So that creates a social or greenwashing problem. It's not just, uh, uh, usually people will think that there's a um, uh, kind of like um, a debate about uh, what can be uh, social or green was kind of like a definition uh, because uh, different jurisdictions obviously will have their different taxonomies, uh, taxonomies and, and, and they, they probably will have uh, some argument there. But now is really the percentage because according to our principles, uh, basically 100% is, is a, a strict requirement. So mm -hmm. that's why, uh, you know, for example, like China is the biggest uh, jurisdiction uh, in in Asia and even globally, it's a leading country for such um, insurance. Uh, maybe not for social, but definitely for green. But this is why they are excluded out of the picture is simply because you know, uh, uh, according to their uh, regulation, uh, you know, there's always a certain percent percentage. Then that created a problem of such washing problem. Um, we uh, first at ICMA level, uh, it's still a market driven. Uh, and uh, we want to address that uh, uh, in a um, uh, unique way. Uh, so basically, we uh, release the Q&A from time to time to basically to respond to such increase from the market. Uh, oh, you know, certain buy side firms, you know, what I'm supposed to do. And uh, they're, 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 uh, such insurance are qualified, uh, you know, and should I uh, uh, buy those bonds? Uh, so... Uh, this year, again, uh, out, of, out of our uh, GBB AGM, we actually um, uh, consolidate all those Q&As and, and basically publish a, uh, a guidebook uh, basically to uh, have such Q&A. Uh, &A. And that will include, say, like a pupil companies. If uh, this is company is, uh, you know, a social related or green related company, uh, when they tap the uh, debt capital market, their bonds are green or social, um, our response is not because it, again, they should uh, 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 strictly comply uh, with our principles because you know um, you probably have some routine um, expenditure, for example, like you, you, you pay tax, uh, you pay uh, you know, uh, your employees. Those are not uh, you know, uh, social or green uh, compliant uh, uh, projects. So obviously uh, when you issue any bond, they cannot automatically uh, uh, become a, a social and green bonds. So in a way, we want to give the market a very clear guidance uh, and, and, uh, and um, uh, you know, at least that there's a certain, certain, you know, standards they can reference to. But uh, again, we are not a regulator. We're not in a, a good position to say, uh, this is a green social bond. This is a good one. That is not. So uh, we certainly cannot do that. And also on the other side, as I, as I uh, just mentioned, um, uh, in addition to those high level principles, we also create a different uh, uh, guidance, including like uh, uh, impact reporting for social bonds and how you do those bonds. We even create a very standardized uh, uh, template for the market to follow. So th th those are the measures we uh, want to address uh, such uh, green or social washing and also to uh, respond to the uh, increase on the market. Okay, thank you very much, um, Rico. Um, there's also a question about, you know, as the focus of social bonds has shifted uh, from basic services to emergency support. Um, Jason, and as an investor, um, have you observed, um, you know, changes in the efficiency of outcome monitoring? Yeah, I think uh, it's a good question. You know, 
we're still, uh, I think, uh, very, very early in the early phases of, of the growth of this market. Remember, you know, given given the very large increase uh, in, in issuance uh, and really takeoff of this market that just started last year, a lot of the issues outstanding um, are only now reaching kind of the, the one-year mile point where we would be expecting to see uh, the, the impact reporting come back. Um, so I think it's still a little bit early days uh, as to see you know, just what is what is what has the effect of the crisis been on on the exact quality of, of the reporting? Although certainly, you know, we've seen in the green bond market, um, you know, as the market grows, because we're more developed, more mature, and more more um, you know broader broader spectrum of, of investors are, are looking at this and, and gaining know how. Uh, you know, certainly the demand for for more uh, rigorous reporting um, uh, we think will, will 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 develop naturally over time. So it's still a little bit early days to say. What's been the effect on on the reporting? Uh, but I, I I have I have confidence that the, the market pressure is there uh, to move it in the right direction. Thank you. Thank thank, thank you. Um, Grace, here's a last question. Um, as an economist, um, if a government you know, is is to issue uh, thematic bonds, is the debt ratio to GDP has to be considered? Um, yeah, uh, basically, if, if it's a sovereign issuer, actually, um, it is, of course, uh, also part of their overall debt exposures. So um, I think policymakers and then still needs to think about this uh, in line with their overall financing uh, plans. Uh, but there is uh, uh, one more, um, something different between a social bond issuance or uh, in general sustainable bond issuance compared to conventional. I think um, um, the uh, issuers also need to think about the difference because they are facing a, a different market actually. So there are more uh, investors with special mandates. Um, and then also, um, uh, I think they can, they can also try to, uh, um, this kind of issuance will also help them to, uh, to, to link to their overall um, uh, pledged SDG achievements. So all these special considerations will, uh, should be also taken into considering to the uh, decision making how, whether, whether they, they should issue a social bond issuance. And then of course, uh, there, are, there are a lot of uh, more factors to be, to be considered. Uh, but in general, um, I think uh, uh, the, the overall financing financing positions in, in, in their own budget, it's, it's something important to be, to be think of. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, and due to the um, shortage of time, um, there are a few remaining questions, so allow me to address um, them very quickly. Um, there's also a question about the selection criteria on um, you know, how, how to select a social project to support the bond issuance. I think in the social bond guidelines, um, there's a list of project categories that, that you can refer to, and that should give you a better idea on what kind of projects that can be um, you know, utilized or can be financed or can be refinanced by a social bond. And also, um, you know, can a social bond support an inclusive and sustainable recovery, especially you know, during this virus um, period? Of course, the, um, as um, Rico mentioned, the social bond principle was recently revised, uh, updated um, a few months ago in June this year. So it has also taken that into consideration when they revised the principle as well. So I think we come to, this comes to an end of um, our panel discussion today. And my apology is that we cannot address um, you know, all the questions that are coming in, but I would like to take this um, opportunity to thank our panelists, Jason, Rico, and Chris, um, you know, for, for sharing your valuable insights. And also thanks of our participants today for joining us until the end of the webinar. Just uh, before we close, um, I wish to make an announcement um, on the next um, Asian Impact Webinar titled, How Smaller Firms in Indonesia Survive One Year Into the Pandemic. This will be held on the um, 19th of August on Thursday, um, starting at 2 p.m. Manila time via Zoom. So please visit the, um, the Asian Impact Webinar website. You can see the URL on your screen and you know, for more information and also for registration. Um, until then, um, see you next time. And thank you very much, um, everyone, for joining us here today. Have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>